Hey kids, welcome to Unit 2, Lesson 5, User Input, Exercise Number 1. We have a, what do you think this program does? Let's jump into the code and see what it does. First thing I want you to notice, we have a new import statement. This is java.utility.scanner. Let's look at the documentation for this and see what this import statement does. I'm going to go over to document, click the arrow. Over here we have Java utility, and down here we have scanner. If you look, what this is, is a way for us to get user inputs from a variety of sources. Another thing I want you to notice, it says method details. And it's going to operate just like the methods from the painter class. Let's take a second and read through some of these. First one I want you to notice is the system in. It looks like whenever we create a new scanner object, because remember it's a method, so we have to create an object for it. It's going to be written just like we have been before. The class, this time scanner, our variable name is going to be input. It's going to be a new scanner and it has a parameter system in, and this is just saying, Hey, we're going to take input from any standard keyboard out there. We're not going to worry about overloads right now. Closing. We actually have to close this class much like we use curly cues to close in the scanner class. We actually have to use a line input dot close. This closes the scanner object that we created. We're not going to worry about has next right now or has next boolean or has next double or has next int or has next line. We are going to look at next. And what this does is this finds the next input of our scanner class. So this is going to look at the code and say, oop, there's a scanner class right here. I need to do something with that. We have next boolean, next double, next int. Again, I think I saw that on the code before. And really what this does is it reads whatever value the user is inputting, whether it be a double boolean or this time int. You'll notice those are our primitive data types as well. This also checks what is input is also going to be an int. And if it isn't, you're going to get this mismatch exception error. And kids, you're going to start seeing this a whole bunch, especially if you're going to watch these videos. Finally, we have next line. And this just reads whatever the user inputted till the end of that line. Using all of these, we can find where user inputs, store with the user inputs, and then look for the another line to do that. Let's go back and look at our code. We're importing our scanner class. We're creating that new object input and it's looking for a keyboard input. Looks like we're printing off the statement, enter the first number. And now we're creating a new variable first. It is an integer and it's going to store that input that we're going to get over there. And then we're going to look for the end of that line. So this integer first is going to be equal to our object input, whatever integer we enter. Then we have another print off here, enter the second number. And we're creating another integer second. And again, it's going to get whatever that user is inputting again, whatever integer we enter. Then we're creating a, another variable. This time it's an integer sum. And it's going to be equal to our first and second ints that we created up here. Then we're going to print off the sum of first and second is sum. And then we're closing our scanner class. What do I think is going to happen? Well, so for me, let's use the number two. It's going to say the sum of two and my second number will be five and five is two plus five 
is seven and it should say seven. And don't forget to write that in there before you run kids. Let's run and see if it works like I said it did. Two, five, and we got seven. Key takeaways from this lesson, kids, is understanding this scanner class and how it really operates. As we read through, we saw what system.in did. This actually creates the scanner that allows us to get user input. What next int did, this line let us capture any integer the user input and what close did. And this, like curly braces, closed the object. And by understanding that, we understood what happened with this program. I think for this lesson, that's all we really need to know for now. I'm sure we're going to expand on it in coming lessons. Hopefully this helped you understand the scanner class a little better. And always kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next lesson. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.